I'm joined this morning by Karen Bates Gazer with Turning Point. Good morning to you. Good morning. Thanks for having me. I'm so glad you're here. We do this. We do this once a year during Sexual Assault Awareness Month, don't we? We do. What's Turning Point? So Turning Point is an organization that works with survivors of domestic violence and sexual assault. Um, Our ultimate goal is to help them regain control of their lives um, and kind of just integrate back into society as, you know, whole individuals. That's really the ultimate goal. But there's a lot of things that go go into that to make that happen. I know of somebody right now who's in a situation, probably most of us know of somebody who's in a situation. And I have watched this person go... From bad relationship to bad relationship to worse to worse to worse. And each time I say, get help, call a place like Turning Point, go to a shelter. But each time she says, no, 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 he apologized. He'll he'll never do it again. This is not sexual assault. It's domestic violence I'm talking about in this particular woman's case. But regardless, when someone is in a situation where they are being abused, some people don't understand why it's hard to leave that. Can you shine a light on that a little bit, please, Karin? Well, leaving is always a challenge. And actually, leaving is the most dangerous time for a woman. Um, Domestic violence and sexual assault are both about power and control. And when the abuser feels like they're losing that control because the the survivor or victim is is considering leaving, that's usually when they kind of up their game, if you will. Right. Um, so that's a very, very dangerous time. So it's it's very challenging, and there's a lot of factors in play. Most of the time, um, these individuals have been isolated from friends and family. That's a typical um, abuser strategy is to isolate. Okay. Um, lots of times they don't have control of their finances. So it's easy to say leave, but if you have 10 cents in your, in your pocketbook, how are you going to do that? Right. The question is, where am I going to go? They may not even have a car. They may have children in the home, and that's, you know, that's a whole nother can oh, of worms. Boy, it's that like, surely you know, is. do you take your kids with you? How do you keep your kids safe? How do you get your kids to school? So, you know, everybody says, well, why don't they just leave? And it's just, it's not that simple. It's way more complicated than that. I, is it true, and this is just a, an assumption on my part, if someone has children, are they more likely to grab the kids and go out of a protection for the kids? Because... We don't take care of ourselves. We know that that's a given, and we leave ourselves in bad situations way longer than we should. But when we see that our kids are in danger, are we more likely, or do we live in that same denial and say, no, 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 they'll just come after me and and won't mess with the kids? Um, I think most of the time the kids are a factor. I have one survivor who told me that she put up with years and years and years of abuse, but he actually hit her daughter one day, and she said that was it. That was the line in the sand that had been crossed, and she left the next day. Okay. So everybody, again, every situation is different. Right. Um, and, and women will take on a lot on their own shoulders to protect their children. Um, but sometimes that is that is the, the thing that pushes them over the edge is they get to a point where they're concerned that their children are going to start being impacted so greatly that they have to leave. When we're talking about domestic abuse, I think in some cases, in a lot of cases, this is probably something that that sneaks up on somebody too. Because you know there are so many different kinds of abuse. Just because someone didn't hit you doesn't mean they're not abusing you. And it's so easy to excuse away oh, it was just bad behavior, or he just got mad at me and said these horrible things, or I shouldn't have pushed him in that direction. And then it inches up and inches up until all too often it becomes violent, right? Well, interestingly enough, we use the analogy of the frog in the boiling water. You put the frog in when the water's cold, but you just keep turning up the temperature, and before you know it, the frog's been boiled, and they never made a sound. And that's how domestic violence can be. It just... You know, that line in the sand keeps moving. And you're absolutely correct. There's all different kinds of abuse. I mean, we we have clients that come in that the gentleman never laid a hand. I shouldn't say gentleman. Abuser never laid a hand on them. Right. But he's controlling them financially, and he's, they're subject to emotional abuse and verbal abuse. And, and there's, there's lots of ways to hurt somebody that doesn't necessarily involve laying a finger on them. Then there's the shame. We need to get rid of the shame, don't we? We do. Um, it's never, it's never the victim's fault. Right. They, no matter what. No matter what. They, they never asked for this. And so the, there is a lot of victim blaming and shaming that goes on and, and it shouldn't. 
Now let's talk at length, please, about sexual abuse. This is one of those subjects that has been so top of mind, tip of the tongue, right out there. Every other conversation, it seems, has something to do with some level of sexual abuse. And I think we need some clarification right about now. Not that anyone who believes they felt abused should be told they weren't, but I think our lines are getting a little bit blurry through our discussions, don't you? I would agree with that. Um, You know, there is not a cut and dried definition for abuse. Um, It, 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 it's, it's a, like you say, it's a little blurry. Um, but, you know, if somebody is touching you and it's unwanted, that's, you know, that can be considered abuse. So, you know, lots of people have their, quote, Me Too stories. Um, but, you know, last year, Turning Point did 374 sexual assault exams. So that's more than one a day. Yes. Um, and that's just in our Macomb County area. So, you know, <laughs> those are actual assaults. That, those are rapes. It, and, right. and so there's the varying degrees of, like you say, sexual abuse where it could be not necessarily a rape, but there's other things going on. And that's where, I mean, one, we need to not be afraid to talk about it, but I don't know where we find our perspective, Karen. I just don't know. If someone has been raped, somebody deserves to be punished. If someone has been physically hurt, Someone, if there's criminal activity, punishment is warranted, period, end of sentence. What appears to be happening, and it's a shame because I think it diminishes what true victims of assault are going through, what appears to be happening more than I would like to see is hurt feelings or or ruffled feathers are now being, people are saying, oh, you you assaulted me. And we need to have clearer definitions, I think, because otherwise, why should you walk around feeling like a victim if you weren't? And why should a true victim feel that what they've gone through is being watered down because everybody seems, not everybody, but many seem to be jumping on the bandwagon? Am I making sense? Yeah, I, I think I hear what you're saying. Um, and again, there's... Everybody has their own perceptions and their own realities that right. that they deal with. Um, but, I mean, let's use, for example, the Larry Nasser situation. Right. Um, did he did he assault all of these people? Yes. Yes. What kind of assault? You know. <laughs> right. You know what I mean? I, I So I would say, you know, those are absolutely assaults. Right. That's, um, a, that's clear cut. That's clear cut. But, you know, there are some people would say, well, that wasn't a rape because he, you know, he didn't do the dirty deed. Well, he still assaulted those women, yes. those young girls and you know, whoever, you know, what I mean, that was still assault. Yes. So, yes, there's different definitions. And obviously there are different legal definitions for different degrees of sexual contact that, you know, they have, you know, first degree, second degree, et cetera. But those are all still assaults. Yes. Somebody lays a hand on another person, cut and dry, and the other person says no, especially, cut and dry, no. That's that's assault. What I'm talking about is, okay, when I first got into radio, all right, 40 years ago, the world was very different in the workplace. And it was every other day that guys would say things to the women in the office and it was annoying as all get out. It was bothersome. It was irritating. Some of it was disgusting. It didn't affect my career. It didn't affect my overall sense of well-being. I just thought, okay, you're a scum, and I w- rolled my eyes and walked away. I'm hearing and seeing some women who who went through similar circumstances to that trying to ruin people's lives and careers. And that's what I'm talking about, where it gets blurry Yes. Were you offended? Absolutely. But there's a a very strong difference between somebody telling an off-color remark in your presence that you can just say, okay, you're gross. Go away. I don't want to be in a room with you. And that person then pushing you up against the wall and trying to kiss you in in the corner in the office. Big, big differences. Uh, Yes. But I would say that you are a certain type of personality and so you were able to roll your eyes and say that's disgusting and walk away but that's not to say the next person is not you 
and they may they may take that home and and, and it may eat them alive. So everybody is is a different. very good point. So so what bothered you at one level may not bother somebody else, and con, you know the converse is also true. So. I hear what you're saying, but I don't know that I necessarily agree with that. Now, that's piece a of it. very good Just, point because perspective is completely different. You're right. And I'm thinking about a woman I do know from about 10 years ago, someone who is known to be that kind of a guy, was sending her inbox notices that, that said some things. And she came to me, oh no, is he going to come to my house? Is he going to kill me? And I, so you're right. And I looked and I said, are you kidding? I said, you're not the only one he's writing this to. He's just cutting and pasting to 30 women. Someone will bite, block him, and be done with it. But you're absolutely right. That's a point well taken. Something that to me, I would just go, ugh, you're gross. Block, go away. She really did take it to heart. And she did have nightmares about it and was worried about her life and her husband and her marriage, although a threat was never made. But so the, your point is very well taken. Thank you. Absolutely. So, that, and that's why. It, yes. It, it depends. Every person is different. Right. And so, you know, I can safely say I'm I'm probably somewhat of a personality like you, and I would that's probably would be my reaction. Right. But I know people that would just probably go off the deep end, and and it's it's not it's not acceptable behavior. So well, that's you know, for sure. So, so rather than say you just block them and move on, no, we need to go to HR. This needs to stop because. If we don't stop him, this is going to continue on, and you don't know which person he's going to get. And he potentially, a good worker could have been lost because of his behavior, and that's You're that's, right. that's not an acceptable option. So I, I, I don't want to be disagreeable, but... No, this just, is perfect perspective and what, what we need to hear. So it, it's... And that's why, like, the victim blaming, it, it just, it should never happen. Because right. Because she didn't ask for that. No, she didn't, and, and I see now how I wasn't understanding, because to me, I would think, okay, just a scum, he'll go away. But what what if he didn't? What if he were to really prey on somebody else? And really, the effect it had on her, I feel badly now for thinking it was an overreaction, because it wasn't. It was her feeling. It was her fear, which right away gives it validity. She was assaulted in that regard exactly period exactly and period. And, and i no, guess that's, that's a very good point that's Thank the you. culture that that we really need to change and and you know i i've heard this pretty much my whole life you know boys will be boys or you know it's just a man being stupid sorry <laughs> you don't get it's a free still pass not okay yeah right you don't get a free pass because you have you know male genitalia that's not how this works right i don't do that to you you don't get to do that to me and so you know i think sometimes um we need to make a point of calling that out. Like we have to call out that behavior. Like that's like there right now. That's kind of like for sexual assault awareness month. That is turning points. Like the stance we're taking is to be an active bystander, to stand up okay, and, and, and to call those things out. You know, I have sons and I've heard them make jokes and I don't let them do that. I say, you know what? Right. That is, that is wrong. That is disrespectful. And you don't get to talk like that. I read a survey recently where I think it's only about a third of the people who who feel that someone has said it something inappropriate or or something to that effect that a third or less actually report it. And you're right, we need to take it more seriously. We need to stand up. When we come back in a minute, I want to talk about behavior in the workplace. Are we starting to do better with rules, regulations and laws? against sexual harassment. And I know that there are some events coming up for Turning Point this month that we need to talk about as well. You'll stay here with me, won't you? I sure will. Thank you very much. I am joined by Karen Bates-Grazier with Turning Point, and I'm Elisa Z. I'm so grateful that you're spending your morning here with us. We will be back talking more about Sexual Assault Awareness Month right here on the Sunday edition.